This one is for all the Christians. Damn, I hope they're coming on tonight. Good night, good night, everybody. While we're here waiting for the notification to be sent out by Facebook and YouTube, please go ahead and share this live. Trust me, this one is testimony. It's actually a testimony, and we're going to talk about the word of God along with our testimony. All right, so we have a little echo there. So tonight, welcome everyone, welcome everyone, welcome everyone. God is good, God is good, God is good to me, how can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Come on, guys. God is good. Share the life, please. Share the live testimony. Tonight, I'll be giving a testimony. Come on, guys. You don't want to miss this one. Someone needs to hear this. Someone's life needs to change. It's Testimony Thursday. Welcome, everyone who has joined. I welcome you. Please share this live. Come on, I told you, bring someone else with you, okay? God is good, God is good, God is good to me, how can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. He picked me up, he turned me around, he planned my feet solid ground how can i let him down how can i let him down he's so good to me god is good god is good god is good to me how can i let him down how can i let him down how can i let him down he's so good to me because of his grace and mercy that's why i can sit in front of you tonight and sing i you know due to all facebook and youtube they love talk about copyrights even when you have a dub even when you buy the song even when you put up that disclaimer they want to say that you're violating their community standards and so I'm going to show them, so listen, girl can sing, right? So sing along with me, guys, while we get ready to start tonight. God is good. God is good. God is good to me. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. He picked me up. He turned me around. He planned my feet on solid ground. How can I let him down? How can I let him down? He's so good to me. Is God good to you tonight? Is God good to you tonight? Well, let me hear you say hallelujah. Let me hear you say glory. Let me hear you say amen. God is good. Come on, guys. Drop your comments. I want to see. I want to see. I want to read. I want to know how God has been to you. I want to know how God has been to you because I know he's been more than good to me. Good is an understatement tonight. So I just want to say officially welcome to everyone to qc uplifting and inspiring ministries i'm your host tonight royal cleopatra and i'm gonna bring you some good substance tonight something that will resonate with you when you leave here you'll be like wow not only wow but you'll be blessed and you look into your own life and see if there be anything wrong that don't belong and then you go to god and confess and ask him to deliver you like he delivered me i chose christ I chose Christ. Who do you choose? Who do you choose? Come on, guys. Who do you choose? Tonight is an awesome night. We want to thank him for another awesome Thursday night, almost the end of the week. We are still here. We are breathing. We're not in jail. You saw me post today on my Facebook page. You're not in jail. You're not in the hospital. You're not in the grave. So why not give thanks? What is holding you back? I don't know, but I know I'm not afraid to shout hallelujah. I'm not a shout, afraid to shout glory to God because he is my keeper. 
He's my way maker. He's my strength, my rock, my tower. He's my provider, my protector. He is my deliverer. God is my deliverer. You understand? So tonight I am going to tell you a testimony. A testimony that I have been redeemed from. I'm no longer a slave. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. Tonight of the only Christian them. We like it, we like it. Hey, the only day Christian them. We like him, we like him. Yes, guys, we gotta get in that mood. Listen, you can't be a Christian and daddy daddy. You cannot be a Christian and be our child of God and be daddy daddy. You can't be, you cannot be, you can't be. The blood has bought me. I'm walking in my blood victory tonight. Listen, guys, my testimony is gonna blow somebody away. He is going, it is going to blow someone away tonight. I am washed in the blood. His grace and mercy has brought me through. So we just want to take some time out to pray to him and to give him thanks for another day. Father God, tonight, as I come before you, Lord, I ask that you be with me, speak through me, to speak to someone who needs to hear this testimony tonight because for too long, some of us have been held in bondage and it has been caused by a curse that was placed on our lives. In other words, some of us even now are still serving another God other than you, not realizing that all other God is the works of men. And tonight, Father God, I just want to thank you for being my master, being my creator, and for transforming my life into the person I am today, taking me from the pit and placing me in the palace as your royal generation, your royal priesthood, your holy nation. God, I thank you for the voice. I know I'm loud and I know others can't take it, but you know what? It's good to know that I am loud for you and I'm spreading your word, sharing my testimony with someone to inspire and to uplift them tonight. Father God, have thine own way. And I pray that whatever is being said here tonight will glorify your name. And whoever is listening, I pray, that they will get a message from this tonight and not just walk away feeling the way that they came in here tonight. And so God, we're gonna ask you tonight to just bless us, each and every one of us, and to open up hearts and minds so that they will accept you, they will receive you, and their lives will be transformed. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, amen. How's everybody doing? How are you, my conquerors? How are you, my conquerors? Let me tell you something, Satan just always love to show up in colors. Always love to show up in colors, but not tonight. Not tonight, Satan. Not tonight. You know, the devil just love highlights, but I am going to come out from under that spotlight, and I am going to be the light that Jesus Christ placed in me, because greater is he that is in me than he that is of the world. What do you say, guys? Amen. What do you guys say? So tonight, we have several scriptures that I'm going to draw reference from. I chose Christ. He chose me, but I could be disobedient and still living in sin, still living in nastiness, still living in a dark place, still serving the devil. Because if you're not serving God, who are you serving? Think about that. Who are you serving if you're not serving God? Someone says today, um, someone shared something with me and I want to share this with you before I get into it, into the meat of the matter. Okay. I want you all to clean your ears tonight. I want you to make sure that your ears are open and I want to ask you, please just open up your heart today. Listen, even if you don't want to listen to me, because I hear some people asking others, Oh, you can listen to her. Listen, you see when God changed your life, it doesn't matter who or what, who says doesn't matter. So that doesn't even phase me. Don't listen don't don't listen and have 
a notion to say, oh, can you listen? No, listen to the words because everything that I say, I ask God to make sure that it is of his divine order and that it is the truth and nothing but the truth. Because I'm going to tell us something, guys. It's what me, I worship God now. Me worshiping the spirit and truth. You see all the fornication on me, you know? You know, see all the adultery, the this, the that. Listen to me. Me tell them that bye-bye. All the sorrows and everything and all the nastiness and who want who hold that over there. So me walk and hold my head high today. If when me didn't see me, I walk and stick out my chest and hold my head high till people, I mean, jealous of me of, of that. Can you imagine now? Listen to me. Me now have no time to dibble double and all the nonsense that I was in, whether I was innocent or not. That is my past. That is buried. I am now redeemed. So tonight's scripture is we're going to draw for your sword. Because remember, we always say, make sure you have your sword ready right here. So. Okay, make sure you have your sword ready. So our scripture, we're going to look at Isaiah 44. We're going to read some verses in Isaiah 44, and we're going to read Psalm 1, verse 1, right? Ephesians 5 and verse 11, I think, and Proverbs 28 and verse, I mean, we're going to go through them, so don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. I know I'm reeling them out like that right now. Don't worry. We're going to take our time and we're going to go through them because somebody needs to hear this word tonight. So now let me start by saying, I remember one time a man told me how much he had a dream about me and the dream was like, and I know he might be listening. And if not, I know he will be listening because this man must stop follow me up. I'm not going to call any name over here, but I'm just going to tell my testimony. And when I tell my testimony, I don't really care who don't want to hear all right welcome everyone welcome everyone welcome miss opal how are you doing how are you my sister everyone else who is on the live tonight and the man told me that he had a dream about me and how i was a mummy and anybody knows what a mummy is you know it's nothing good right a mummy or mummy whatever you call it you ever go to universal studios yet Yeah, guys, and you used to go in the haunted place. I don't know if everybody, anybody has ever been there, but I did. And the man said he had a dream and how I was rolling out and he called me a witch. So anybody knows, last Sunday, if you were listening to my live while I was on my way to church, I said, do not let anyone speak any negativity or any evil or any curse into your life. When them speak it, you shut it down right there. So, But you know what? Some of us, because we don't study the word and because we're not settled in Christ, we let people do all these things and we just walk by. Sometimes we'll smile and don't even know the danger that just happened to our lives. Some of us were even cursed from the womb, but we're going to take it um, slow. All right, good. So the man called me a witch. So I say a witch. So, you know, me, them times in my mouth, they just Lego like Lego beasts and me never care. So, you know, they out of this and when they come out of my mouth, I may just get angry easily and just never care. Never have no respect for the person either, which it was wrong, but still yet, it was wrong. And me, I said, which? Well, you know, me cancel the words. I'm going to rebuke it right there and then. But how many of you were brought to the bomb yard when you were children? We'll get to the story now, to the testimony. How many of you were brought to bomb yards and read a man and read a woman by either your mother, either your father, or your grandmother, or somebody, Auntie, Uncle, Nebony, somebody that was older than you. How many? Let me first put up my hand. Tonight, let me just put the disclaimer out. Tonight won't be the speaky spoken night. So if you're not used to the dialect or you don't understand the dialect, I will beg you to ask for someone to interpret by dropping your comments in that section. We're going to take it real tonight. The naked showed no secret. We're gonna expose darkness tonight. All right. So let me put my hand up first. I was brought to the bomb yard when I was about 10 years old by my grandmother. Now, mark you, when I was growing up, I used to go to Sunday school every Sunday. So technically, I was raised in a yard that was considered a Christian home, somewhat. Right? Mostly my on my grandmother's part because my grandfather, I, mean, I remember him going to church. I don't remember seeing him in church. And 
My grandmother brought me to the bomb yard. Now, I don't know the reason she brought me to the bomb yard, but looking back, I'm thinking that it was round about common entrance time. Who remember common entrance? They might call it a different name now. And so I'm thinking that she probably bought, brought me there to get washed off because, you know, common entrance coming up. Anybody can relate to me? I know three people watching me. And if you know what I'm talking about, please vibe with me tonight. It's Testimony Thursday, and we're going to keep it real, and we're going to expose Satan and his deeds, his devious deeds, and all the devilish things. Tonight, we're going to expose it. And so she brought me, and I, from what I can remember, I remember I was in the yard. There were other people there, and... It's like we waited, we go from early, you know, and it's like me, I was one of the time I was getting impatient. I can remember that because like I said, I was about 10 years old because if I can remember things when I was three years old, mark you, I can remember the things at 10 years old, right? Yeah, guys, you know, the children, them, and we have to keep this noiseless. Yeah. And we were there, and I was getting restless one at a time. And I remember when it was our time, we are finally going to one little thing, one little shock-like. You know, anybody knows what a shock looks like. And so I was in there, and a long time, I kind of inquisitive. You know, so my eyes were all over the place because I'm looking like, what is going on here, okay? And so I remember the person who my grandmother brought me in front of, they had like all different kinds of stuff in front of them, like paper, pencil. And I remember like while my grandmother kept talking to her, the person was just shading the paper with the pencil. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, what is this? But, you know, I was too young to understand what was going on. Anyways, did you know that the fact that I ended up at that bomb yard that made me a witch? Come on, somebody. Anybody understands that if Sister Opal is here, you know, because it looked like only probably me and you understand what I'm talking about. And I'm going to try, God, allow me to say what I'm saying so that my viewers can understand and they don't leave here being confused, but they get the com they comprehend what is going on here. And so now that I'm looking back, now that I'm delivered, I'm looking back and say, when the Monday called me, which I mean, I can't sleep, but. Really and truly, me never know say I was a witch because me don't know myself when I became old to be dibble dabbling with witchcraft or anything like that. Because I myself, out of my own self, never been to any places like that. Never tried to, well, there was some little nonsense that I did because, you know, as Jamaicans, we grew up being superstitious and all of these things. And, you know, you do some little things and you say some little things not knowing that that was actually witchcraft. And if you ever found yourself in any of those situations, that makes you a witch. So if you've not yet confessed and repented and be delivered, because even though Jesus Christ came and died to redeem us, there are some things and some curses that we have to break off of our lives and we have to get delivered from these demons that are following us all over the place. Get it? All right. So let's go to Isaiah 44. Let's go to, we're going to talk about more stuff, but we're going to take it slow. Isaiah 44, right? And we're going to read from, okay, so verse 6, verse 6, Isaiah 44, verse 6. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. I'll go, I'm going to read that again. Isaiah 44 and verse 6. Thus said the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts. I am the first and I am the last. And beside me, there is no God. Now, we're going to go down further to verse 9. They that make a graven image are all of them vanity, and their delectable things shall not profit. I hope you're following me, guys. For those of you who are watching and those who are about to watch, I hope you're following or hope you will be following me. And they are their own witnesses. They see not 
nor know that they may be ashamed. Who have formed a God or molten a graven image that is profitable for nothing? That's a question. Behold, all his fellow shall be ashamed, and the workmen they are of men, and the workmen they are of men, let them all be gathered together, let them stand up, yet they shall fear and they shall be ashamed together. All right, so Isaiah 44, we read verse 6 and we read verse 9 through 11. Now, you know what this is saying? God said, beside him, there's no other God. So all other God gods are of the works of men, okay? My father used to get lots of visitors with stories of ailments, possessions, etc., and he would prepare a bath to get it off them. I was usually sent round a bath to stay out of big people business, but a minister said I was still affected. We'll soon get to that, Sister Opal. Thank you for sharing that. It's Testimony Thursday. You, I am redeemed. What about you? What is your verdict? My verdict is that I am redeemed. I am made free. That's my verdict tonight. And I'm sharing my testimony and I'm sharing the word of God with you and you and you and you and who is to come. Now, the Bible clearly tells us that there is no other God. You have some people walking in earth who believe in the new age movement and they keep telling people how they are, are, are God because God is in them. No, no, let nobody fool you. No, let nobody talk to you about utter rubbish. You got to read this. And that's why I'm bringing the word to you just in case you didn't know or just in case you don't have the time. Just in case, just in case. The word of God said there's no other God. No other God. So how can you get up every day and call in yourself God? Can't be right. What kind of God are you? Okay. It talks about the idol worshiping where they made themselves other images. Okay. And they worship graven images, but it will not profit them. They may look like they're flourishing right now, but they will not prosper forever. Never. They must wither just like the green grass wither after a while. Okay. So if you want to know, here, the word of God. It's not Cleopatra's word. So when they're going to tell her that if you listen to her, don't listen to them. Come and hear the word of God. So God says there is no other God beside him. And everything else, whatever they do, it will not profit them. And they must be ashamed. That means they must fail. If they don't wake up and allow the scales to be ripped from their eyes and their eyes to be opened, then they're going to be ashamed and they will fall. They will fail woefully. Will, must, shall. The Bible said it. So when I come out and say my enemies must fail woefully, that's the word of God. It's not witchcraft. Because a lot of people believe that when you get radical and you start dealing with Satan radically and let him know that, Come out of my way because you're already defeated. You're already a liar and a loser and not your words over my life. People believe that that's witchcraft. Witchcraft was when my grandmother brought me to the bam yard. That's a form of witchcraft. No matter how nobody tried to pretty it up and say, it is a form of witchcraft. And that would make you a witch if you're a woman, a wizard if you're a man, a warlock. Okay, guys? So let's go back to Halloween. We just past that date, October 31, the month of October. We're now in the month of November. How many people know the meaning behind Halloween, what it stands for? And I'm not even going to go deep in that tonight because I have so many other things to share with you, okay? What is Halloween? Because really and truly, I'm going to speak it is because Ephesians 5. Let me go to Ephesians 5 if I can find it, all right? Let's go over to, before I get into the Halloween business, let's go over to Ephesians 5. Mm -hmm. Turn your Bibles with me. I saw them what I say in a church, yeah? Turn your Bibles with me. Tonight we're just going to be, I'm just going to be my authentic self, right? And we're going to talk what is true. We're going to expose the devil. We're going to speak the truth and shame the devil. You ever hear that little saying when you're growing up? Speak the truth and shame the, the devil, right? All right, so Ephesians 5. Verse 11, it says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, means expose them. So that's another word for expose. But rather reprove them. The Bible states, Ephesians 5, and if you don't have your Bible, 
draw for your pen and paper or your phone for your notes and jot the stone so you can go and read it for yourself. Ephesians 5 and verse 11 says, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. So I know some people sometimes, and that's why, you know, when God do things in your life, never you ball and wheel off of certain things when you lose certain things or lose certain people out of your life because they were removed for a purpose. You probably were not yet awoke and you didn't see the danger that you were going to get yourself in because Psalms 1, 1 tell us, us also, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And that the Bible said, the word of God says that. I don't care what any other man say, oh, that was written by men. Those men were inspired by God. And I believe in this word more than anybody else. See, enough people there was under Kevin Smith's spell and cult. And up to today, some people still are defending, even after they see the wrong that he was doing, that was against the word of God. So let's get into the word of God, people. It's testimony Thursday. I was brought to the bomb yard. That made me a part of an occultic, dark world. Demonic. Okay? That's not of God. The Bible says, let us expose them. Let us expose them. Fellowship with the... Do not fe have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of the darkness. So what that means, say, if you know, say, a man out there, so in the world... Yes, we're here to evangelize to them, minister to them, to get them to come over to Christ. But, for example, you have some people who are out there in, like, we hear about the Freemason and all of these things. And I'm going to talk to the truth. Who don't like it, then guess what? This may not be for you. Why should I get entangled with somebody who I know is deep in darkness and knows that they are deep in darkness and knows exactly what they're doing is not of God. Why should I fellowship with them? You tell me. I'd rather go fellowship with a, 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 another sinner who they don't understand. And I know that they don't understand. But if I know that somebody knows and they know for sure that what they're doing is wrong, I'm not going to fellowship with that person because the Bible tells me I must rather expose them. I must rather expose them. Because at the end of the day, you must know that what you do, and others must know that what you're doing is wrong because you well and know so what you do is of not of God. So we shall expose them and they say, we shall not sit in the seat of the scornful. So why should me come shake on with you and know say you are not of God? I don't want a can mix. Because anyway, I take it, you're gonna probably try to draw me in a year that is because that is a that is the purpose of Satan and his agents is to come to steal, kill, and to destroy you. So no matter how they try to come with the likes and try to wind you into them, their ulterior motive is not anything good. It's not anything good. So we have to stay rooted and grounded in the word of God. We have to stand up and know that Christ, greater is he, greater is he that is within me than he that is of the world. Because yes, Satan is the God of this earth and the world, of course. So that's why when some people walk on and talk about them and God, what kind of God are you? Who are you? Excuse you? So I was going back to say from the beginning, this lady, she said, someone says to her, her mother said to her, someone told me this today that her mother told her once that none of her children will not bite her ears on judgment day. Now that may sound like a parable to you. So let me break it down because I asked her, I, I understood it, but I wanted to get the full meaning of it so that I know that for sure what I was thinking, what I was on the same page with what she was saying. So what it means when her mother used to tell her that she didn't want any of her children to bite their her ears on judgment day, meaning that some of us parents um, who know that you're dibble dabbling in sciences, witchcraft, because let me tell you, other than me being brought to the bomb yard, I was given a letter to mail off. I was given a letter to mail off one time when I was going to high school. All right. And, you know, when you're in high school and you're learning Spanish, so at the time now, me, I read the letter and me, hippity hop and I went to the post office. So I'm going to hand the, the, the lady, the postmistress, the letter. She look at the letter and she look at me. But, you know, when somebody look at you, you know, and they might give you one look and I say, hmm. So when I was reading the, the letter, the letter says, De Lawrence. So me never pick up sense and know say the same thing where people said dealer runs. And I, the fact that I held that letter and went to mail off that letter means that I was partaking in witchcraft and that made me a witch, even though I was innocent. So I'm here to teach somebody tonight something. And you can also, when you learn, go back and share it and share this 
broadcast with somebody else so that they can learn that if they have found themselves in such situations, it may not be them themselves who gone, have gone to do iniquity, whether it be at the bomb yard, read a man, or be a man, um, voodoo center, whatever it is. Because there are some things, like I said, it may look simple to you and you may look like, oh, but me never do no witchcraft. The fact that I took that letter, remember, I was given to it. I was give, It was given to me by my parent to post. I didn't know what it was. And some of us grow up in families that have witchcraft background. And I can say, not proudly, that my family has a witchcraft background. And I decide that I no longer will be a slave to that witchcraft. I no longer will be bound to that witchcraft. And you hear sometimes some people say, I oh, forget upon curse that curse and break that curse. Well, I am the curse breaker today. And I'm here to expose darkness. Did somebody get that? I am here to expose darkness. I was raised in a family whose background was of witchcraft, probably still is, I don't know. But I know for sure that I was raised in a family of witchcraft background. And sometimes some of us will see our lives being held stagnant. Some of us will see like we're going around in circles because we were sacrificed. Did you hear that somebody? Because we were sacrificed. So I am no longer a slave to sacrifice. The only sacrifice I'm sacrificing is now that I was bought by Jesus Christ. Blood bought. Yes, that's why you see on the screen I said I'm blood bought. And the blood bought that I was blood bought is of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That came on earth and shed his blood on Calvary for me to redeem me and to save me. And so that I can stand here today being delivered from witchcraft. And not serving because when you are in witchcraft, that means you're serving another God. You're not serving the true and almighty God. And as Sister Opal rightly posts here, I'm going to put it on the screen. My father used to get lots of visitors with stories of ailments. So being what she had tried, so people used to come to our father to get them bought. And she had to take for herself. It never was. She know what was going on. Yeah. But she, her life was affected. And thank God she's one also who's no longer a slave to that. Bye-bye. 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 Good night, Shana K. Welcome, welcome. Please share this live if you're just joining, please, because somebody needs to hear this. Somebody's life is being held stagnant today because of things that they are innocent of, that they were involved in, that was of the dark kingdom, that was not of God, and they have not yet been delivered. And they need to hear this tonight. Simple things like what I'm trying to explain to you tonight. Simple things. Simple, and I say simple because a lot of times we see some things and like we say, oh, because I would have thought that I was a nice girl, a girl who was a believer and I'm of God because I've never, I've never known myself personally putting my hands to iniquity, burning no candles. And guess what? Let me add to that. I was the one who had to read over the candles when my grandmother used to go to the, go wherever she, because you know, in Jamaica, you know what they used to call it? We are goat. We are goat. When they hear somebody say them are goat, you know where them are go. You know exactly where them are going. Like I said, tonight is not a speaky spoken night. Tonight is a dialect night. So if you don't understand it, please, you can drop in the comments so I can respond to you and explain to you further or ask someone what is, what is it that I'm saying. I mean, I'll try my best to put in a little English here, but for the most part, it will be my dialect tonight because I'm speaking to my Jamaican people, my Caribbean people mostly. Okay? When you hear somebody used to say that they are, them are God, a reader man, them are going to obey a man. Them are going to the voodoo priests or whatever. That's where they're going when they used to hear. Anybody can agree with me? Isn't that what them used to say? We are God. Yeah, we are God. We are going to get. We are going to get read up and so. Yeah. So even though you may not have gone there to kill somebody or whatever, because it's deep in demonic activities, that power will hold you back. It will try to suck you in like a vacuum. And if you are not or you do not become aware of that and you continue to live that life, all you're going to see is just pure 
negative things happening in your life, like you always hear they say, like old holes tumbled on it. Sometimes it may look like you may be sailing smooth, but then here comes a storm, and then here comes another storm, and then there comes another. And you'll be like, hold on, after me not cut out cold tongue. And you're wondering why your life is in shambles. Thank you so much, Shanake. You're wondering why your life is in shambles. It's because a lot of us were brought out to these places by our grandparents, by our mothers, our fathers, our aunties, our uncles, whoever they brought us to these places. So even if we never dip our hands into that dirtiness, that nastiness, that foul activity, we are still guilty and we have to be delivered. We have to curse and renounce those covenants because there and then you form a covenant with the demonic realm. You better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. You better believe it. And if you want no more, just go down in at this. Draw for your sword. Draw for your weapon. Everything that you hear I'm speaking about, it's right in here. Expose darkness. We have to expose them. And that's why that man named Kevin Smith had to be exposed. By whatever cause, he had to be exposed. Because many come. Because my grandmother used to go to church. She did and gone now. So we can talk. She used to go to church. Yeah, enough time used to follow behind her go to church, especially when I come in and time to go get the bread, the what left bread. Mm, comedy craven. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? She was a church going woman. I remember when she was on her dying bed in the hospital when I went to look for her in 2016, April. She said to me, I remember before when I got the news that she was given four days to live and she wanted to see me. And now that I'm looking back, I'm like, I'm wondering why she wanted to see me. I don't know. I still don't know. I'm just thinking and saying, I wonder why she wanted to see me then. But anyway, she was down, like down, down, poorly. In Jamaica, we said poorly. And let me tell you something, guys. When I went to that hospital, that woman, life came back into that woman. And like I'm looking now, it probably was that connection. I don't know. Because remember now, you have some people who see the gift in you from God, you know, and they will come and try to suck that gift, that energy from you. Do you know that? So beware. Be careful of who we're getting entangled with, especially in relationships. And especially when we're getting in fornication relationships outside of marriage. And even when you're choosing that person or you're about to get married, make sure it's the right person. Yeah. Because there is wrong and right persons out there. Because nothing we married to the wrong person. And that's why the people, them man, still have stopped me. Yeah? But that's another story. Okay? But I am no longer a slave. And I want somebody to get out tonight as well. Out of that deep, dark pit. It belongs to Satan alone. I chose Christ. Yeah? Because he first chose me. And I don't want to, you know what? When I think back and I look back, can you imagine if I was dead before I had gotten the chance to confess and repent, much less to give a testimony tonight to somebody? You can imagine if I was gone and gone in darkness. You can imagine how tormented I would be in hell right now and have nowhere to repent. So that's why when people like myself come on here, when God is using me, taking me from the pit and putting me, in the palace, yes, royal nation, putting me on that, 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 um, I used this word the other day, a pillar. I'm a pillar, using me as his pillar, as his servant to stand rooted and grounded and can tell you what I had been through. Look what the Lord has done. He heals my body. He touched my mind and he saved me. Just in time, I'm going to praise his name. And I remember the words of the song, but we don't know what we're talking about. You understand? That's why I can sit here boldly tonight and speak his word and don't care what the devil wants to say. I no longer pay attention to the devil. I know he exists, but I know how to win him now that I am redeemed. I'm washed in the blood. Are you washed? In the blood, in the soul, cleansing blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white than snow? Are you washed? Are you washed? Ask yourself. 
are you washed? Where are you today? Yeah? It's not about telling my business or telling my family's business, but these things have to be exposed. No longer we will keep them any secrets. I fear not because God says he's always with me. So I know a lot of times my family, they watch my lives and them say, oh, so come out, I come talk the things. And yes, we're going to talk. I need to get my acts together. And some people may say, oh, you need to take them one side. Well, if you take them one side and you try to take them one side and still, you, you don't have to call no names. You understand? But they know themselves. And I'm using my family first before I, them say, pity be more to your eye before you pick it out of somebody else's eye. So yes, my family was one that has witchcraft background, probably still is. Okay? And so the Bible tells me, according to Ephesians 5 and 11, says, I must expose and must not fellowship with them. And that's why I only ever wonder sometimes when some things happen in our life. Like, for example, me now. I'm always like a loner or considered myself as, you know, the, the black sheep because I'm always, no matter how family, not to say I'm not a family person, so don't get it twisted and run with it and go say, otherwise, listen to get what I'm trying to say. You ever see like, all right, so let me just use it anybody. Like you just, your spirit just not take and you just take away yourself from certain things or certain people or it end up that the people them end up being far from you. Never you, sometimes don't question it. Because God is always, if you are a believer and you have faith and you put trust in God and you decide to serve him and serve him and serve him 100% and more, he will reveal to you some things where you couldn't understand or dare even try to comprehend or analyze. He will. He will. He will. And I ask me, I ask you. As, hey, I remember the days when we used to have one foot in and one foot out and I play church. Me now play church now, guys. So when you not see me, just pray good prayers for me so that God can strengthen me so he can continue to use me. And like I post today, don't watch the hype. Just make sure say, and it was written by me. Those words came to me today. Don't watch the hype. Make sure your soul is Jesus Christ type. And this is not about anybody else it's not about that no watch the cloud I, I forgot what it is i wrote but it is there on the page right here on this same page on facebook you'll see it it wasn't posted too long ago a couple hours ago you'll see it i saw when the words them come to me and i know i have gifts not gift but gifts and i couldn't understand but i thank god that today i can sit or stand in front of the multitude and speak a word that is from God and don't have any fear and don't have any shame and don't feel guilty and don't matter what nobody wants to say because God is my father. He is my God. He's God of gods. He's king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. He's a, hey, am I telling us something? God good. God good, God good, God good. Yeah, God good. Good night, cousin you, right? Well gone. Well, go on. Good night, my family. Big up yourself and everybody else who is listening. Listen to me. It's not time to play play. So back to the Halloween, because we talk everything in a one. Me say many of my friends and will say they're my children of God are Christians. I dress up in a Halloween. It look fancy and it look nice. Mm -hmm. I saw the devil always make the things them of his look pretty and irresistible. And I never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because all the eyelash of me are wear. I mean, I can pray over it and break any yoke and so. But as time goes by, I try to reduce the shed, shed to shed to shed certain things that needs to be shed. Yeah? Yeah. So I'm not here to bash anybody. I'm just here to edify you and to sharpen you because iron sharpens iron. And just in case you forget, I'm just here to remind you. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah? Yes, so must enough people are celebrate this Halloween thing, and then all some churches are celebrate it. I mean, I got talk about the churches, them now. Like me say, me I got talk the things, them no more secret. We're exposed darkness. Don't talk about harvest. Why are you gonna celebrate harvest just around the same time when Halloween is being celebrated? And you know that Halloween has to do with necromancy. The Bible talk about necromancy. Halloween has to do with the spirit of the dead. Yeah, necromancy, that's what that means. When you speak to dead people, people who are dead, you call them back. Yes, it can happen, people. It might sound like a story, like a horror movie. Like, yeah, boo-boo, 
Yeah, but boo boo, let me tell you something, boo boo. It's true, true. Yeah, it's true, true. Mm -hmm. So they call up the dead during this time, especially on October 31. And I'm not afraid because God has me covered. So don't tell me to use wisdom. We got to expose darkness. A lot of churches don't want to preach about this because they themselves are taking, are partaking in this activity, this demonic occultic activity. And I asked me, I asked, you know, information nowadays is out there. Google University, go Google the origin of Halloween. So no for uno Christian are recalling yourself, children of God, we are dressed up and are dressed up on a pit in a eight. The Bible said in a proverb said, teach your children thy way, train them up in a way where they're supposed to know right from wrong. So that when them grow old, them can't depart from it and they will always be rooted and going. Not to say that they won't swear because God knows that there is no perfect man because in the Bible too. So there's no, not one of us is perfect. Not one. But when you know right from wrong, steer away from it. Blessed is a man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of scornful. So when we read the word, it's not to recite it for Christmas carols. Holy night. Mm -mm. Our Christmas concert, no. Of a steer rooted and grounded in them word and strong. And when them come, when the new age movement come, I can tell about them, my God, about I am God. I am that I am. I only one I am that I am I know, and it's God Almighty, Jesus Christ. They want to come and them spit on him and them bruise him and them beat him and them give vinegar for drink and then put the crown of thorns on him here. That one there, the only I am that I am. I am of him. Yes, because I was made in his image. Don't make nobody tell him no foolishness. The Bible just said a while ago in Isaiah 44 verse 6 say, There was no other God but him. No other God. No other God but him. What does that tell you? I know a lot of people say the Bible is parables. But there are some things that just come out just like that. There's no other God. So what does that mean? It tells us that all the other gods, when they made those graven images, they are of the works of men. So that means to say they are worshipping idols. That's not God. Those now have no power. They have some sort of power because belief kill and it cure. You understand what I'm saying? Yes, I remember that the devil was of heaven. And like I said before in another life, that the devil can make man, but one thing he don't know if he do is to blow breath in a man. So he does have some power, and he will reward his people, just like Christ reward us. And a lot of us children, we give up when we see them out there live the life because it look nice and shining. Just like the Halloween, they dress up and, oh, I'm Cleopatra. I'm dressed up like the Egypt. I'm no longer bonded to Egypt because God sent Moses to take out my forefathers out of this. So I'm no longer bound to Egypt. So why should I celebrate Halloween or dress my children like Halloween? And let me tell you something. Probably a one time I ever dressed my son, my first son, in any costume. Probably one time. And myself, I only remember myself dressing twice. You will see the thumbnail cover of this video. I was dressed as a pirate and I was dressed as a police officer because I didn't know better then. Um, so let me vibe with my people in the meantime because tonight is Testimony Thursday and we're here to edify each other. I talked to a first lady and her rationale is that they keep a similar event such as praise and worship night as a way to get the young people to... No, don't do that. Exactly. Hey, instead of out celebrating the typical Halloween, they also give out candy. What do you think? That is still partaking. The fact that they're doing it, especially the same time that they're doing it, is still my. If you ask me, Sister Opal, they are still partaking. Don't even up. Don't even up. You should be shining. Light of God shines. Darkness dull. Why you want to even up yourself with darkness? Why do you want to even up? Why would you want to even up yourself in darkness? Don't do that. We should always be a step ahead of them. It is still equalizing with, with, with what they do at that time of the year. You understand what I'm saying? Don't do it. Don't do it. Why would you want to give out candy? We know that candies, these candies a lot of times are poisoned and put all sorts of, of evil in them to hurt and harm children because they want blood. They want blood, a lot of sacrifice. If you didn't know, apart from them doing necromancy and calling up the dead and, and letting and telling the dead to roam, just in case, for example, let's say me and one of them did in an argument. When them call up the dead, they would all goodly call my name and say, go for she. Because like I tell you, they do have power. Don't think that the devil and his agents don't have power. Don't let nobody fool you. They do. But their power is not, cannot match. 
cannot match to God's power. It cannot match God's power. Not at all. Oh, good. The Instagram people. Sorry, it's a mind game. Thank you for joining. I forgot that I had um, Instagram live going on too. Yeah, you can't. You cannot even up on equalize and talk about this and trying to find a rational to it. Just like you have some people who that's 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 double doubling. That's double doubling. And like I said, a lot of churches do it. And even I saw um give me this. Sorry guys. Get up and go over so go in the room. I don't need to hear you. I just said get up and go in the room. Malachi, over there. Over there. Sorry guys. Right? Yes, I'm a single parent for now, but I know my boys is coming because when God transformed me, it might have begun better than what I thought I had before. So I'm not settling anymore. I am of worth. I know my values now. Yeah. So you know what? how it go when they are a single parent, but despite that, they need to have respect and manners. I know that tonight is Testimony Thursday and mom is giving her testimony and speaking to you. Yeah. Don't let nobody try to rationalize rationalize anything just like i would tell people that look i'm not afraid to be a martyr and i'm speaking it again and one would say you know you have we have to be careful if god was gonna say we have to be careful he would have sent him son to die upon the cross and would have think about it right waiting he would have think about it and he used people back then to show us so some of us were gonna be when the time like this comes so we're gonna born we're gonna bend and we don't have the faith what we say we have it not really up there yeah I'm at a point now where if Jesus said, do this to me, I'm not afraid to stand and say I will be a martyr for God. That's where I'm at right now. I'm not afraid to stand and say I will be a martyr for God if puss come to the shop because him never asks, him never, if I'm but and I wonder if he was going to die for save me, for redeem me, so me could have sit down here so today and feel free and know that he made me free. So all that go. But anyway, let's get back on track. You understand what I'm saying? Halloween. It's darkness. It's darkness. It's darkness. That's not of God. So no matter how it looks and everybody want to show off with the best costume, it's not of God. And I did not expect to see nobody who call themselves children of God to be in any costume or have their children in any costume, no matter how it look fancy to you. You know, right? You can't say God and I say Satan. You can't. The Bible tells us that we can't serve two masters because you're going to love one more than the other. Oil and water can mix. Never will mix. No matter how you try, no matter what kind of scientists it be, can mix. Mm -mm, will never mix. I know a lot of people don't want to hear this, but guess what? A psycho. The truth hurts. The truth are going to hurt them. Yeah, the truth are going to hurt you. But the truth is the truth. We can. The Bible says we must rightly divide the word of truth. It so must expose darkness. And we're exposing. I'm exposing darkness tonight. Listen, guys, listen. Listen, I am so glad that God showed up and showed me some of the things that I was involved in innocently. And some of the things that I knew I did wrong, yeah, I knew of. But, hey, when you're living in darkness and you don't know people, let me tell you, it's not a nice thing. It's not a nice thing. You know? You are God's people because John 3, 16 said, John 3, 16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So yes, you're all his people. And as I ask God that I need to speak truth. I need to speak truth to you, my audience, through the Lord, so that you, his people, can be Free. Today, because I hold on to Jesus Christ's hand and he holds on to, to me, I am more than a conqueror. Yes, I am more than a conqueror. For his grace and mercy was what kept me and brought me through. For your grace and mercy, God has brought me through, not because of anyone else. So all the grandmother who brought me to the bomb yard, any parent who may have where I worship devil or was worshiping devil and is still not delivered, I still wonder if they forgive them life to Christ tonight. Listen, 
Uno could not save me. Uno could not redeem me. No bomb man, no reader man could not redeem me, could not have paid the price for me. And that's why I can stand boldly tonight and speak the word of Christ and tell you that those things are wrong. So don't forget to not ask together in a Wally with British voice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where would I be today if it wasn't for Jesus Christ that he didn't made a sacrifice for me? Where would I be? Not for we do all kind of blood sacrifice, animal. No animal blood sacrifice couldn't do it for me. No human blood sacrifice couldn't be do it for me. All it would do is get me deeper and deeper in sin and death and, 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 and chaos and confusion. I don't want that. Even if I was of that, I don't want that anymore. So I choose Christ because he first chose me. He said, whom his son made free is free indeed, indeed. And it's your choice. It's your choice. He gives us choice. You see, our loving God, he still is. And a merciful God, he still is. He still give a choice. He could have said, listen to me. He could have stick me up in and said, listen. I come and say, I'm going to pay the price. I guess what? You're off do this. And you can't or else straight. But he still gives us a choice. Mm -hmm. I am washed. I am washed. I'm washed in his blood. I believe. I know. I have faith. I don't worry anymore. I don't worry anymore. I remember those days, but I don't live there anymore. I walk. I'm moving. I'm moving on the king's highway. Don't you know that I'm trusting in amazing ways? In amazing, trusting in amazing gates. Don't you know that Satan is on my track? Lord, I'll never, never, never turn back. Lord, I keep moving up, moving up, moving up. Oh, Lord of the king's highway. Don't you, hey, wanna sing with me now? Don't you know that I'm trusting in amazing grace? In amazing, trusting in amazing grace. Don't don't you know that Satan is on my track? Lord, I'll never, never, never turn back. Oh, I keep moving up, moving up, moving up. Oh, Lord, on the king's highway. Yeah, I'll keep moving. I'm going to look back. Now I'll go back this sir. Will I slip? Probably. But I know that I'm going to go down. I'm going to go bricks with my hand and get right back up. I know that for sure. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because who lives? Not man, not my grandmother, not my mother, not even my father. But Jesus Christ, because he lives, all fears are gone. Because I know. Who holds the future and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I live in my because see a long time song in a so no no mind me if me have a home some of the words I'm gonna know what me I sing about yes my sister rope in rope in you should have the right as so no you could talk about God mm -hmm. and shame the devil please God I'll shame the devil tonight shame where shame the devil and expose him works yes and some of his agents mm-hmm I just pray that my grandmother did, did, did repent because sorry for me can't help her if she didn't. You understand? Mm -hmm. But at the church, I can walk boldly today. I'm walking in by blood victory, the blood of Jesus Christ because I was blood bought by Jesus Christ. And so I have no condemnation. So when man try to condemn me, me just laugh after them because I'm not going to Condemn myself because what? Jesus Christ, there's no condemnation. No, no, that not upon my life no more. Mm -mm. No, 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 no. If I didn't apply the blood, then my hell would be hot. So if you don't apply the blood, then your hell will be hot. Let me say this again. If you don't apply the blood of Jesus Christ, not no goat, not no cow, not no fowl, nor no human, no babies, no humans, okay? Then your hell, which hell is always hot, which we know, but it's going to be hotter. Just know that, just press on, just wall it. And if we have to go through long suffering, just know that we have to resist the devil and resist all the mother gods. 
and, and the people who we must have fellowship with them. And especially if you know, say so these people know that what them are the wrong, no fellowship with them. Take for yourself, follow the ready man, take for yourself, follow the word of God, and take for yourself. You understand? Please follow the word of God and take for yourself. Yeah, when you get up, you, you, you when you know you're in Christ and Christ is in you, but you are not God. As I say, I am not God, I am of God. Christ, the Spirit, the Word, greater is He that lives within me. Yes, but I am not God. I now call myself no God. I call me now fly up in a God face. So said there is no other God but Him. It clearly tells me that there is no other God but Him. I am of Him. You know why enough we get licky licky and, and with us hunger for, for riches and everything is because we love darkness. We just love the darkness more than how we love light. What make we love darkness more than how? It do come like some woman when you just meet one man and you're ready to go do whatever you don't know. You don't want the light to turn on. Why? No man, if you love light, brightness, glow, yeah, radiance, yeah? <laughs> we love too much darkness. Darkness have too much sweets and too much likes and we're too licky licky and we're too much of luckies. You know what lucky mean? We will run back and run back and run back. Mm -hmm. So Halloween, back to that car, we are jump from this and we're jump this. So it's not anything of God. Just like when you dream and see your grandmother come to you. No, that's familiar spirit. You have to shun them there and get up and chant your prayers and rebuke them. That's familiar spirit. All of them, there's something there, um, death and, and, and all of these things. That's what Halloween represents. So please, children of God, get it right. Stop partaking. Stop knowingly partake in things that, especially those deep, dark things. All right? Because you're only setting up yourself for failure. That's all nastiness and occultic and foul, foul, foul. Pungent. It's not sweet. It's not that sweet aroma that Christ is of. No. Mm -mm. Remember that God is our everything. There's nothing or anything or any power that is greater than God because He's our Jehovah Nisi. He's our Jehovah Shalom. Our Jehovah Jara. You know the rest of Jehovah. He's our King of Kings. He holds our future and a familiar spirit. So now when you talk about your dreams, if, oh, and oh, my son, my dead son is watching over me. I'm going to stop them something there. They will say, yeah, serve other gods. That's a God where you are serving. Not God. If you were serving the true and living God, you would have talked about no dead people who dead gone. As, uh, uh, um. Good night, Angie. How are you, my darling, all the way from the shy? Yeah, that's how I have to break that. Hi, hi, Kareen Brown. How you doing, my sister? Welcome, I know you're there at work and so, but thank God you were able to join to listen a word or two. You understand? We'll keep it real tonight. We're exposing the devil tonight. No more secrets. The naked truth. Like I said, I was a witch. I never knew. Never knew. I never knew. People, I never knew. That's why we have testimony Thursdays. Because some of you probably a witch we are watching right now and don't even know. And that's why we have a shed light. We have to shed light into the darkness so that you can see. So the scales them can come off our eyes them. And we have to open up our ears and open up our heart to him. I was a witch. I never know people which till all manna call me witch to box cover. But I had to renounce that. I had and not only renounce his words off of my life, but I had to get deliverance from being a witch because I partake. I took, I part, took a part, take, part, took, part, take, no, 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 an English class tonight. Back to the word. Partake in a stuff what my grandmother used to do. And when we, hey, when my parent used to do, another parent used to do. And the other day, I may I talk to one next parent and who knows them probably are dibble dabbling a necromancy too. Who knows them something they're not right. And when sometimes we, we that's why my children, or when some of them not talk to me, me have to try to get to them because me no want where come down for me. Me have to break it and break it once and for all. It can't follow me no more. Cannot follow my children no more. Cannot follow my children's children, my children's children, 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 children no more. Oh, no for our parents. 
no for our parents and grandparents guilty of witchcraft to the day yeah because no for them never confess and no for them never renounce it and take out no for our children the mother bandage and no for our parents sacrifice our lives to demons to the demon realm, not for our parents and grandparents and forefathers sacrifice our lives. And let me let me share something to you. Not for this, there's a sacrifice where them can set on your life where every year as you get older and older, if you don't know how to break this and live for Christ and stay in Christ because you can't run in and say, oh, I want the curse break and then you're gone back out there in the world. It's going to come back worse. Just remember that. That no, it's not gonna be just one, it's gonna be a lesion set by you know. So there's a curse where them can also set with because remember, you know, when y'all make trade, we all hear about all these celebrities, you not know, for them where they sell them soul or sell their family soul, pity soul, mother soul, on a seed, on a hear it, not now hide no more. So we can talk about it and expose too, because some people still are ignorant of these things. So no for our parents sell we them them sell them soul and sell them picnic them to demons. And that's why no for we couldn't prosper. I'm gonna use the word couldn't because that was my life then. And sometimes me now say they weren't sorry guys, one second, one second, guys. One second, guys. I'm going to take a quick break and I will be right back. Please stay with me. I'm coming back and I'm coming back with more. Let's reason tonight. All right. I'm going to take a quick break and settle some things and come right back. Yeah, man, this is Cleopatra. It's a message with the queen. It's a message. Invigorates and inspired. It's a message. Yeah, man. She came and she saw. Yeah, she was a coward, but she conquered. You see me, I say, so come join. The inspiration and the edification. It's a message with the tops of humor. You see me, I say, endorsed by ladies, you see me, I say, uplifting and inspiring, you know. This is original Little Kirk, say, hey, clear patch, them can't hold it down no time. Good over evil, set it! Run it, never yet pets it, hey, the beauty queen, you know, straight, you know. Clear patch, oh, 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 most I, I bless you, oh, 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 Them in the sea now, yeah. Cleopatra tell them, say, tell them, 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 Check it out, yes, you got the most I clear our path right and no session and I just don't shout like this out the dark, yeah. Him give her a clean hands and now. Greetings and blessings. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world. My name is Brother Madhu, and I'm here simply to endorse something I have became a part of. It's a program called Uplifting and Inspiring. And the word that grabbed me was the bit which says, Your concerns concern us. Together we conquer. This is a live program that is hosted by an African queen called Cleopatra. Right? Where she discusses and talks to people who does exactly that. Uplift and inspire. So tune in to all the social media platforms. It's Sundays, 4 p.m., Eastern Standard Time, okay? Support the thing, because I believe in this new rearranged world, when people are doing anything that uplifts and inspires, it needs to be supported. So Brother Madhu, a.k.a. Father Soji, from the Qualitex crew, fully endorses this program. Check it out. Uplifting and inspiring. Thank you very much. Yeah, man, this is Cleopatra. It's a message with the Queen. It's a message. <laughs> Invigorates and inspired. It's a message. Yeah, man, she came and she saw. Yeah, she was a co. Yes, guys, welcome back. Welcome back. I had to take a quick break because, you know, them children here. Listen, the devil is alive. Can I tell you, even a while ago, while I took that break, they had the TV on and they were watching something on the TV and there was a what you call like an ad. Can I tell you what was on that ad? 
pure naked people. So the devil hear me talk tonight and get mad and decide for sure. But I, when I said naked, like Cinemax, naked, I had to just turn off the TV a while ago. And that was an ad on the TV. So now see how the devil working on all different kind of mad. He mad because me I expose him tonight. But listen, devil, you know that you are already a liar, a loser, and you're already defeated. So don't try me. Don't try me. Now look at you. Yeah, man. So back to what we were saying. The, yes, so, you know, the, the Bible tells us in Isaiah 44 to do not serve any other God but him because there's no other God. It tells us that we need to expose darkness in Ephesians 5.11 and in Psalm 1.1. 1, 1. And before we read the psalm, then we just sing them like, us, like a song, what they're supposed to be. But we don't really digest the words and think about the words or anything like that. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungod of the ungodly, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. And then there's another scripture that I want to to highlight also. Um, Proverbs twenty eight, and um, it talk about like the ones who woe be to the ones. Because the Bible also talk about woe be to witches and warlocks, and if they don't decide to repent, they must die. And the Bible said that. Listen, listen. The Bible tells us about that. So when I hear me I talk. I'm just highlighting the word of God. Woe be unto witches and wizards and all of those people in the demonic realm. If they decide not to repent, their reward is death. They must die. They must die. And let me tell you something. I am so radical these days that when I go to war with the devil and his powers, I don't care where they're coming from. I deal with them wicked. I could have my mother, my father, my sister, my brother, my auntie, my uncle, my nephew, my niece. Listen, I deal with any dark power wicked because I'm fully armored from head to feet. I put on the helmet of righteousness. Yeah? I saw the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness. I'm a fully girt my lines with truth. Yeah? And once my lines will never put on the, 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 the kinch of them yet, I'll see how it hug on the belly and suck in the big belly. I saw when time me put on the word of truth, now devil can't come here, so. He must be back up. That's why most of you seen trying to use people like the children them to get to us because you realize, say, we are fire. We are fire. We can't war the devil. Like, so we are, um, you know, look a bougie girl, like one like them nice. Ha! No. You have to get mad and make sure you put on your war boat, government boat, and so. Yeah, can't play with the devil. Cannot play with him. So Proverbs 29, 28 and verse 10 says, Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in his possession. You hear the word of God? So I'm going to read it one more time. Proverbs 28, verse 10. So the four scriptures tonight is from Isaiah 44, verse 6 and verse 9. And Psalms 1, 1, Ephesians 5, 11, and Proverbs 28 and verse 10. And I'll read that one again. Whoso causeth the righteous to go astray in an evil way, he shall fall himself into his own pit. But the upright shall have good things in his possession. What that mean? So our mother, our grandparents, and we used to care, we got to read them, man, because as we said, those are part of witchcraft. With that big, small, in between, are still witchcraft, just like any sin, a sin, okay? Even though you have some sin, the punishment is more than some. Penalty is more than some. However, like I said, sorry, my verdict is that I am redeemed. I'm washed in his blood. I am blood-bought, and I'm walking in my blood victory, so when the Bible tells us so these people who cause the righteous, which is the God people, to go astray by taking us these places and causing us to, you know, dress up your dress up your children, then when you teach your children them about Halloween and I teach them to go trick or treat. A trick you trick them and a treat you treat them. You are trick them into the devil's kingdom. Yeah. So woe be unto us parents who don't teach our children these things and let them know that it is not of God from now. You understand? Woe be unto our parents and grandparents who dibble double in sciences and dealerants and all these things and the burning of candle and the burning of sage and the burning of incense and the burning of these things and chanting incantations and devil words over these things and using the Bible, not God's way. 
Woe be unto you when them, my grandmother had me I read the Bible over these red candle and white candle and yellow candle and this a candle was said this and this a candle. I turned me in a witch and poor me never know. Hmm? Them something them alright. We can't do that. Because your life are going bitter if you not change. Your end is going to be very bitter. And if some of us have parents or grandparents and we had gone through this, I'm telling you, if you don't want to hear this tonight, me know, God, no, for we don't like hear the truth. The truth hurts. The truth burns. The truth cuts to the core. But I me always tell people this in a real life now. So me always like, that's why me not like liars. Me now say me never used to tell lie one and two. But you have some serial liars out there and some pathetic liars out there now. Me no like liars. Me have to talk truth. All when time you go lock me up and so me still have to talk truth. And it worse now. What you it worse. Now it's worst. So we are gonna do devil. We are gonna do devil. Hmm? What are you going to do? We are gonna do. I'm gonna burn you with fire. I mean, no, you can't take the heat. You don't like fire. Mm? Mm -mm. That's why you're so mad. That's why the devil is so mad. You know, like to see when time we are free. Him don't like to see when we're living happy. You understand what I'm saying? Him don't like it. Him don't like it. And what you understand, say, no matter, no dealer runs can save you. No. Miss Mary runs so a bad can save you. No bad can save you. No goat blood cannot save you. No human blood cannot save you. No sacrifice to the devil cannot save you. All you do is spend out your money and I give these people your money and make your life going to destroyed. You're walking into destruction and the road of death. I'm sure you'll see a lot of people later in a casket. What if that, and a lot of these people, and some of them are listening to me, a lot of these people today sit down, no one give their life to God. And I don't like say they have chick child nor anything, and no one give their life to God. And, and, and know some things what they used to do. Hey, if you don't listen tonight, be sorry for you. Know, if you don't want to take heed, that's all me I go say. No, it's not the time to if or but or maybe if you're going to turn your life over to Jesus Christ. Especially when you know say so you see this on devious, demonic, occultic stuff. No pigeon blood can't save we neither, sister. See it right there, so exactly, Miss Brown. No pigeon blood, no drunk her blood, no fall blood cannot save you. Cannot, 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 can't save you. You could have paid money till you're weak. You could have wear your science ring till you're weak. That can't save you. You could have rub up till you're weak. That can't save you. You could have wear your dealer and chain till you're weak. That can't save you. You could have put what they tell you for putting in your purse till you're weak. That can't save you. You could have read Psalm 91 till you're weak. I'm going to say, let me go down another part there. Because enough of them, they read the Bible, you know. But when they read the Bible, I know for that, I know for really read the Bible. No Psalm 91 can't save you when you worship the devil, let me tell you that. No Psalm 23 can't save you when you worship the devil, let me tell you that. Because God say, no worship, no other gods. And there's a part in, I think, of Jeremiah, it in a way of some people that call themselves Lord. It's the same thing I call themselves God. Me only use the Isaiah 44 verse 6, but there's a scripture in a Jeremiah, I think, a one or the same Isaiah. Either for, it's, it's either in a Isaiah 44 or Isaiah 45 or Jeremiah 1 or Jeremiah 2. Somewhere out of them four chapters there where it tells us that some people will call themselves Lord and it is wrong. It's, it's wrong, guys. It is wrong. As, as Miss Brown said, where the tree falls, it shall lie until eternity. Right there, so it, it shall lay down. Right there, so. Psalms 91, 
Psalm 27, oh, Psalm 31, Psalm 35, Psalm 37. And I them see when I read about fret not thyself because of evil doers. No, how oh, evil doer can I read Psalm 37 about fret not thyself because of evil doer? You can't fight evil with evil. So if you are trying to fight against one woman over this away, one man where you want for yourself, and you are trying to tie on the man to yourself, you only are tie on debt and misery to yourself. One second, guys. I speak to you. I told you, no noise. Didn't I say that? Didn't I say that? Okay, come over here. Sit in the chair. Sit in the chair. It's okay, baby. I'll take care of that. Let me end the live here. Let me end this live here. All right, guys. Yeah, sorry about that. None of them sound they can't save you. None of that can't save you, guys. None of that can't save you. So what I'm trying to say to you, listen, wake up. Wake up. Get wisdom, seek wisdom, wake up, seek wisdom. Listen, nowadays me nullify every trick and fall play of the power of darkness that is of the devil. Me nullify them. So right now I can walk. I nullify every trick, every fall play of the power of darkness because it is of the devil. Me nullify them. Yeah. When them, when, before them even come, before them even come, me not even wait for them come. Me nullify them. Me break when need for break and me curse when need for curse. And I do it boldly because Christ is in my vessel. No matter the storm, he will put a calm to it. And we just shout, has he given me the power to? Because listen, remember that we have authority and power to crush and trample serpents and everything that is evil and nothing can harm us. So why should I? get involved and worship other gods that is not god almighty why because me just love darkness and nastiness no i won't do it anymore like i said i used to used to that's of the past i don't live there anymore i don't look back there so no more i don't even think of those things anymore but i just use them as example to share with you as a testimony tonight do you understand that i just use them to share as a testimony, to let you know. So for the ones who are talking and asking people why, if they can listen to me, to let you know that my life is not in my hands, it's not in your hands, it's in my Lord's hands. It is in Jesus Christ's hand. He upholds me. He has transformed and is still transforming me. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I can stand here boldly today and speak. That's why I can stand here boldly today and speak. And I just want someone to get this message to get this message and to look into yourself look into your life and see if some of what i spoke tonight if you have been victims or if you have been involved in any of these and know that it is time to repent acts 2 38 all right i'm going to read it acts 2 38 is another one for you that's your homework acts 2 i think 38 yeah we have to be rooted and grounded, just like the lady sing, rooted and grounded in the name of the Lord, rooted and grounded by the Holy Ghost. And if you want to go to heaven, you got to be rooted and grounded, rooted and grounded in the name of the Lord. Those sings and them songs there, eh? and I just to sing off and dance and go on and feel nice, but it's to let it sink, let it soak, make ribbit it. You also hear a grandmother used to say, ribbit that in your brain, ribbit it. Roger that, ribbit it in your brain. Like I told you tonight, it's not a speaky spoken night. Yeah, I can do that too. Because, you know, I want to attract a large audience, but sometimes we have to have one little niche and deal with the niche. Yeah? So I'm talking to my own people now, my familiar people. 
but I'm going to deal with familiar spirits. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Yeah. I have the King of Kings on my side. I have the King of Kings on my side. Jehovah Jireh. Yes, Yahweh. Some of us call him Yahweh. And let me tell you, a lot of, as I've said before, let me just remind you that a lot of these people, a lot of these people who are serving the devil, they use the word God. I was reading a little book. I was reading a... Yes, most of the evil worshippers read the Bible too. Oh, yeah, they do. Yes, yeah, screw it in. <laughs> like Miss Brown says, screw it in. For the few of us who are here, share this broadcast. People need to know because a lot of us are living in darkness. And we don't want to come out because it nice us. There's a lot of gifts there. And a lot of money there, a lot of big houses there, big cars there, clothes and jewelry, you name it. But, you know, as I'm about to wrap up, I just want to remind you that God sent Moses to take us out of Egypt. God came, God sent his son to die for us, to redeem us. I am redeemed. And let those who are watching who are redeemed agree and say amen. Don't get bent out of shape. Don't stand tall, stand strong. Now let nobody tell you no nonsense that you can't stand for Christ because when Christ did not die for us, he never asked a question. He didn't think about it. He was deliberate and intentional about it. So when we stand and say, we are going to stand for Christ, and if we have to die for Christ, that's what we mean. We're not going to waver about it. We're not going to bob and weave about it or think about it because if Christ did that to us, enough of us would not be standing here today to even say such thing. So I know a lot of people will disagree with me. I know that the devil can harm us. I know that. I know that. But I will not bow when I say I will stand for Christ because he never thought of dying for me. He did. He was intentional. He purposely died for me, for my sins to save me so that I could be free and free indeed. Free indeed. So woe be to the ones who carry the children of God astray. The mothers, the fathers, again, the grandmothers selling our souls to Satan. But I just want to declare today that victory is mine. Victory is mine and victory can be yours. Jesus won it all on Calvary for me. He won it all on Calvary for you. Thank God again that I did not die or get cut off before I could repent, before I could even confess, before I could even testify. I just want, hey, a lot of us take some things to granted, though, you know, me I tell you, you know, people, you know, me don't want to keep on along tonight, but me I tell you, you know, a lot of us, we take us so many things to granted. I just want to thank God that I was not, he never cut me off before I got time to confess and repent and 
be delivered. Yeah? Some of us, we practice darkness, but God came and rescued us. He plucked us. And I just want to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What an awesome picture. What an awesome picture watching all his saints marching on to glory, to heaven. What a privilege. What a privilege. Some of you every day on the ear, you don't want to listen to lives like this because of a drama and a mix up. You understand when people come and talk and we just come for talk about God, a very few people let me say, I don't care. All of me alone and Jesus Christ for here. So every Thursday night, as long as me have life, may I go come. Because when I started this in June, it wasn't anything planned or organized. It just happened. And when I look back at it, I said, God, you're goody. You're just good, so. Mm -hmm. So I can smile at the storm today because God is with me. He's holding me in the hollow palm of his hand. I just want to give him thanks all day, every day. Sometimes I'm picking and give me talking, but I know God is able. He's able, and I will continue to teach them right from wrong, values and morals, and let them know that the things that are not of God, I will continue to drill it. Just like how I try to drill it in a phone head. So now things say them, probably they are do them look at talking. May I drill it enough for them head too? Because the onus is on me. Me know oh, God do me nothing. It, 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 me read it already up front and say, well, be the ones who carry the children of God astray. So we, we, we're doomed also if we not teach them because it's our responsibility. Because right now they're not responsible for themselves. So when my grandmother had brought me to the bomb yard, I was only 10. And I think at that time I would still not be responsible for myself. But now I'm responsible for myself. I have to make sure that I teach my children for the ones who want to hear, teach them the word of God which is righteousness. Yeah? I can smile today. I can smile today. I can shake off whatever the devil comes with and know that he can't touch me. He cannot touch me. I mean, I'm going to put on but no scuba diving diving suit for go dig up my past. So who want to put on scuba diving dude for, suit for dig up my past or be archaeologist? You can go on. I don't know who's paying you. But me... I'm not putting on no scuba diving suit to go back and dig up my past. I'm not going there. I'm not. God is able, evangelist. God, thank you for joining. How are you doing in St. Vincent? All the way in St. Vincent. Thank you, woman of God. I mean, this woman come on this platform already and come do the Shunammite one. The whole place shook. I'm telling you, you need to come back, evangelist. We need you. You need to come stir up the place one Thursday night. Even for half an hour, even for 15 minutes, you need, I'm telling you loud and clear, I'm calling you out evangelist, you know yourself. Yeah? You need to come stir up the place one Thursday night, even for 15 minutes, and come give your testimony and give us the word. Come, come sharp us one Thursday night. All right? Let me know, which we know we can talk off here. But yeah, man, God is, God is able. He is possible. Everything that looks impossible to us. Like I was doing my video the other day, um, Saturday, real quick for those who are here who didn't get to watch that video. It may look like nonsense because I really didn't come on Facebook, um, had anything to talk about. And I know a lot of people might say, she ugly, but I did make sure I put the disclaimer out in the beginning. I said, look, me feel ugly today and I'm putting on my makeup and it's just Saturday shenanigans. But let me tell us something. God have a way of a work in mysterious way. And this is one of them. Let me show you how God works in mysterious ways, people, people. While I was doing my Saturday shenanigan live, just bored, idle, and I don't know. God said to me, and I saw me know, me can safely, I can safely say that God gave me this message. Because some people love Tabo to make them look good and for the clout and to make them look like them are the most righteous. Oh God, God gave me a word. Not for we enough time, we're not getting a word from God. But me know I'm a baby in this. I'm a baby in this, guys. So let me say that. I'm a baby. But I knew God gave me a message. You know the message when he gave me while I was doing my makeup? Him say, you say, just like oh, your makeup, you're putting on your makeup and before. Get up, go to your bed. Get up and go to your bed. Sorry, guys. One second. One second, guys. Oh. Sorry. He said, just like how you're putting on your makeup, you saw your face did look with the flaws and everything before you apply the makeup, I saw your journey did look. And that the word of God said to me Saturday, you know, 
him said just like how your face before you put on and apply the makeup which i do have on some makeup right now him said just like how you had the flaws the the, the little dots and all of this your hair did pull up and never look like it come as so some of us journey look at the beginning so if you had stopped right there and said boy my face just look haga haga so my ear just look raggedy so me now i'm gonna further right there me that kill my destiny but him said no the moment I start to apply the makeup and I put some effort into it and I put some work into it and, you know, and start smooth out the patches and the rough patches and the dark spots and so. And then one at the time, I didn't make one mistake and kind of did a mess up the eyebrow. And I went back. I saw a journey. We have to put effort in our journey. We have to put the work into our journey to walk into our destiny because faith without works is dead. That's the message God gave me out of that shenanigans Saturday just doing my mere makeup. So look here. The process that you're doing with your makeup is just like your journey. And also, some of you journey may not be the same timing so the race is not for the sweep so now watch nobody else your journey may take half an hour your journey may take three hours instead of half an hour so you might put on your makeup for three hours me may just, may just do it in a 20 minutes it seems so some of us so the way the race is not for the sweep it's not for me to watch how long it take you to put on your makeup so my journey may not be the same i don't have somebody get that i don't know if somebody's getting what i'm saying here because like i said i want god to allow me to speak so when i speak you can leave here edified fully understanding and comprehended what i said right instead of being confused because god is not an author of confusion so he used that to show me that cleopatra that was how your journey was looking at the beginning rough and raggedy but it's now smoothing itself out because you put in the work you decided to cling to me and you decide to give me a chance in your life and you're trying to do everything that you're supposed to do reading your bible you know um, being surrounded with people who are, you know, of the same Christ-like mind and all of this. So I had to also put in the word, praying to him, you know, talking with him and all of these things. And at the end, it, 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 it smoothed it out, but it may not be as smooth as yours too. So that's another thing. He said, it may not be as smooth as somebody else's own. And I said, God, what a message. What a message. Anyway, that was off tangent, but I just had to say that it came to me and I just had to say that. So tonight, I'm here making a joyful noise unto the Lord. Why? Because he is good. For he is good. He is great. What would I do if he didn't care and sacrifice his life for me? What would you do if he didn't care? Like I said, God is not condemning me. He chastises, just, he chastises who he, whom he loves. Right? And like I said, me, now I put on no scuba diving, do um, suit. To go back and dig up my past. May I say bye-bye like Jonathan Nelson. Bye-bye to sorrow. Bye-bye to pain. Bye-bye to abuse. Bye-bye to the nonsense what me used to do. Bye-bye to the drama. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Yes. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And I will testify. And today I am sharing my testimony because I am not dead. I am in the land of the living. And I'm so glad. What about you? What about you, my friend? What about you, my conqueror? What about you? I will not be discouraged. I will not be dismayed because God has taken me from death, placed me in the path of righteousness so that I can grow, grow, grow. Remember the song I used to say, and you will grow, grow, grow. All of the song was a reload tonight. So yeah, sometimes I have to go back to basics to them long time song there. Yeah, man, them have meaning. You understand? Forward ever, backward never. I have no intention of looking back. I'm moving up the king's highway because a greater reward. I want my crown. My name Cleopatra. I want my crown. I want my crown. I can't name Cleopatra and I receive a crown from Jesus Christ. No, that would be bad. I'm moving up the king's highway. I serve Christ today because he made a sacrifice for me. So I am offering up my body as a living sacrifice. And that's the only sacrifice. I will not sacrifice my children by taking them to go serve the other God. I will not sacrifice my grandchildren by taking them to any barman, read them, and are serving any other God. 
I will not. And I will tell them not to fellowship with any of such people either. So he who has ears, let him hear. He who has eyes, read the Bible. Soak yourself up in his word. Trust him and you will see. Look what the Lord has done. Trust him and you will see. Look what the Lord has done for me. Enough people know me. Enough people know my journey. Enough people know how me did stay. I couldn't tell other than my kids them when me and them were in the house. I couldn't tell last me and nobody in no contention. No, sir. Mm -mm. That's a thing of the past. Will it happen? I don't know, but I'll try my best not to yield temptation. You understand? So because God is his majesty, he's all powerful and he has all dominion, I just want to tell you, my conquerors, that Jesus Christ loves you. He loves you. Trust him and you will see. He will keep you from falling into that dark pit. And if you are in that dark pit, come out. If you are performing necromancy, come out. If you are performing voodoo, come out. If you are using witchcraft against anybody or to do whatever it is, come out. Now is the time. You have a chance. You're not dead. You don't know if the next second half that when the life you finish, if you're going to pass away. So, make up your mind. Choose ye death or life. And with that being said, we have come to the end of another session of Testimony Thursday. And if you feel that this broadcast is worth sharing with someone, go right ahead. Feel free. Don't be selfish. Okay? So, Dear Father, I just want to thank you once again for the opportunity to be on this platform and allowing you to use me because I've always said, I want to be more than an ordinary servant. I want to be more, more. I want to be more than an ordinary servant want to be more and god i just pray that you strengthen me so that when the destruct the distraction and destruction is coming i will resist it just like i hear the pity them are going another the background i will resist the devil god i will resist the devil god strengthen me and i pray oh god that they will understand obedience they will understand respect they will understand to be still and know that you are god Father, tonight I thank you for using me, a little wretch like me. You saved me. You washed me in your blood. You have redeemed me so that I can stand in front of your people and rightly divide the word of truth. Father, tonight I pray for those who have watched, those who are still watching, and those who are to come to watch, that they will be blessed and their lives will be changed if it is not yet been changed, mighty God. And that you will speak to their hearts, that they will receive you and be made free once and for all. And they will resist the devil, resist temptation. Bless each and every one of us, Father, that when you bless us, we will come back to you and also say thank you. Not to forget to be grateful, mighty God. Tonight I ask you to just take full control, heal our nation, heal our people, our leaders, and put them into your hands, mighty God. You know everything, Lord. And I turn over everything unto you. I surrender all. In Jesus Christ's mighty name I pray. Amen. All right, guys. So I hope that you were entertained. You were edified. You were blessed. You got a word. You got a message. And that you will share it with someone else. And that tomorrow, at least tomorrow, you will be in a better place. Okay, guys, so have yourselves a wonderful weekend. Walk upright. Try your best. If you, if you know, if you're not, just try. Give it a try. You know, what beats a failure? A trial. Give it a try. And I wouldn't even say give it a try because somebody would say a trial is a, is a thing to set up a failure. So just do it. Just do it. Yeah, like Nike, just do it. Just do it, guys. So I thank you guys for tuning in. I thank you for watching. I thank you for listening. And I thank you for participating by commenting on Woman of 
women, women, mostly women I see on here. I don't know if men are here, but mostly, most of the comments are women. And you know, we have to, we have to empower each other. Sharp iron sharpens iron, and we know that the word of God is sharper than a two-edged sword. And there's nothing that can be God. Nothing can be God's word. Okay, guys. So fear not. Know that God is with you. And think about Philippians 4. You know, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, think on these things. And don't forget to make a joyful noise unto the Lord, for he is good. You have a privilege of life. Choose life. Have yourselves a wonderful night and be blessed.